Hello everyone and welcome back. I'm heading up to deer camp. It's Thursday morning, 17 degrees out. Fairly clear skies, at least we're getting a little bit of sun. I'm going up today and my dad is also going up today. Deer season will open on Saturday morning. Neither Sarah or Zachary are going to be up there for the initial opening. Both of them have work. Zach's going to come up on Monday morning and stay Monday, Tuesday, I think. I'm staying from today, Thursday through Tuesday. Sarah and Zachary will come up on the third final weekend of deer hunting. Earlier this week, we got about a half inch of snow at the house. Everything was covered in white. And Zachary, he lives about an hour and a half up the North Shore from where we are. And they got about three inches. So none of that is even close to where the you know tent is up north. Much higher elevation, but it'll be interesting to see if there's snow on the ground so that we can see if there's any deer tracks, any type of deer sign at all. Quite a bit of snow closer to Lake Superior, but up here it's dwindling fast. I see a lot of squirrel and rabbit tracks, but I haven't seen any deer tracks yet. One set of wolf tracks back there. I passed up the tent driveway. Just gonna run the loop and see if I see anything. All I can say is it's cold in here. <laughs> I gotta get that stove going right away.
to let things warm up a little bit in here and then I'll start bringing stuff in. It's starting to warm up. What, it's been going for maybe a half hour? But in the back, I hooked up a diesel heater for that back part of the tent. It's working pretty neat. I'm gonna put some more wood in the wood stove and then I'll show you guys. I'll let that run pretty much wide open. I've got the damper on top now just a little bit, but I'll let that run just for not too long, but oh, that heat, you can just feel it coming off of there. That lake is completely froze over. So here's my little diesel heater. I'm actually doing a review video on this over on the Northern Seclusion channel. By the time you guys watch this, that video will be up. That thing works pretty cool. I put it together in the workshop at home and I'm trying to get this set up so that in the wintertime when I come up, if I have one of these, it takes so long for the back part of the tent to heat up. So I've got it coming in right here. I mean, that is blowing some nice warm air. I mean, the wood stove keeps the tent completely heated nice, no matter how cold it is, but it takes so much time to heat it up because you've got to thaw out all the wood and everything. That is some, I'm not gonna lie, that's some nice warm heat. <laughs> we wanna put one, one of these like this. I, I want the air to come in, but then also hook up so the air that is pulling its intake is coming from inside the building because we wanna put one in our, our fish house camper also as a backup heater or have the option to have two vent things like this going through the wall where I can have this coming in and the other one sucking out then we can run a diesel heater in there. That is hot air. Because you guys have seen me sometimes on the winter trip when it's really cold, where I will just sleep up in the front bunk here because it just didn't get warm enough that first day in the bedroom. Something like that would heat that whole back part up real fast. I was wondering if anything froze and popped the top on it, but everything looks good because I mean it got down even at the house we had a 13 degree day. And I really up here it was colder. Well, about the same, but it was more mornings were cold like that, and I was worried that everything I had up here would freeze, but it takes a long time for everything to you know, because the ground underneath is not frozen, so it takes a long time for things to freeze up, but we seem pretty good. vegetables up here in case this stuff was all frozen and exploded so I'm just gonna put it here because I gotta take everything out with me when I go now because things are gonna be freezing up I might not have to this after this time up but I can watch the weather but uh, after that for third weekend it's usually cold cold up here brought up some tortilla chips because I have one of Melissa's mild salsa that she did on September of 2021. It's really good stuff. I thought I might as well eat some of that up. A loaf of bread for burgers and hot dogs. 
I brought some of these, well, I think they call them clementines here, but they're satsumas. And it sucks because Melissa's mom sent some to us. She's got two trees in her yard and they taste a hundred times better than the ones you buy in the store. They're so good, but they weren't at the house yet. So <laughs> I bought a bag to bring up here. And I bought some plastic cups, which don't make me cry. I haven't bought them in a long time, but in the last video up here, I was talking about how we don't use plastic cups at the house anymore. And we just, you know, wa wash them. And I hate dishes, so. And up here, dishes sucks, you know, because you can't just turn on the faucet. So I bought some more plastic cups. And then I brought up milk. You know what? <laughs> there was another, like a half gallon of milk at home that I took out of the fridge this morning. Because we had a full gallon in there and I'm the only one that really drinks milk unless somebody has cereal. So, and they didn't have, they were out of gallons of milk that were like the Super One brand, which are, I don't know, two something a gallon. They had the other stuff for six dollars a gallon. It's like I'm not buying that. So I bought one of those and I was going to take the other one up. I bet you I left it on the counter. I brought up hot dogs, two boxes of hamburgers, the kind that I always make. In fact, it's exactly 12 o'clock. I'm going to have to spider up that grill. I'm making a couple of hamburgers. This one can go in the freezer. And I brought up pork steaks, chicken legs, they were cheap, $3.98, pork spare ribs, and a chuck roast. That's just me up here, so I mean, four pork steaks would do me for three days if I just ate that. I don't know what I'm going to have tonight. And I guess we'll figure that out. I guess we need to get some beer in there. What else do we have here? Oh yeah, hamburger and mushrooms. I thought I could do hamburger, some mushrooms, some canned potatoes and fry all that up. I might do that tonight. That actually sounds pretty good. My dad just messaged me and he's walking in. He's on the road coming in and he's walking into that new stand we put up to see if there was any tracks. And he asked me if I saw any tracks and I said I drove the whole loop and all I saw was wolf tracks, fox tracks, squirrel tracks, and rabbit tracks. I did not see any deer tracks. Pretty fresh snow, but uh, tomorrow we'll be able to tell more. I got nothing for you now. You can stand on the camera all you want. I'm not giving you my snacks yet. Let's see if I can find something that's like three years out of date that the birds could have a snack of. Ooh, I got some. No, 
Milky Way. Quicks are good. I don't know. Well, three Musketeers. I don't like those. I don't want to pick these out anyway. Not for the birds, but we had bought a bag of candy. And in case somebody came over for a Halloween, which they never do, and they didn't. We had to eat a couple of them when we were watching a movie out in the Fish House Camper last week. And I was going to take them with us, and Melissa said, you have some antique candy up there. Why don't we eat that instead? And I do have a bunch of it up here. I don't see any uh, any of my chips like I had last time. I got so much stuff in here. You could eat for a month if you didn't look at the expiration date, which I don't. Melissa does. It says that candy should have been best if used by, what is it, 6 of 2018. <laughs> should be perfectly fine. That really does help warm it up back here. I've even got the fan in the bedroom blowing the cold air out of the bedroom. That's some really hot air coming in. And then I walked over the wrong, you know. Not one thing. I didn't see one deer track. No. I wonder not. Yeah. But I thought for sure back where that stand is, I hit that right. swamp. I yep. thought there'll be maybe a couple anyway. Yep, yeah, I didn't see any. I'll drive it again tomorrow. Because yeah. it was kind of fresh snow. I was the first one, or I was the second one to drive through. Yeah, but yeah, and there was no, no, no one stopped so here for sure. I'd see a little one or two going Right, yeah, just that yeah. there was even a set of tracks, so a That's person right. could, you know. Yeah, but, but if you, you, you went around, and you, you could even walk the through or. You know, your stand is in the clearing also, you know. Yeah, I'll probably go there tomorrow and check and see if yeah. I see any tracks. Because now I'm just going to walk straight through the woods there. And there's a tree, little tree I want to cut down so I can walk through. Yeah, I'd already done Right. Well, because, you know, since it's rained been warm one there since it snowed, and the snow is, what, a, you know, a couple of days old? Probably. I mean, there was one car that went through, so... <clears throat> But we should have some kind of little heater in the garage. You see all at home. Oh, that's what Zachary Heat says garage with one of these at his house. He does. Huh? And it'll burn like 0. 0.7 gallons of diesel in 24 hours. They burn. 24. Yep. So. Oh, I, uh, uh, see, you, uh, 
uh, battery on DCC or Yeah, Zach plugs his in with a DC converter. But I just want I think I'm gonna grab my shotgun and just run walk down the driveway and just take a run down and back and see if I see any grouse. Melissa will be calling me. Well, I guess more than an hour from now, so I'll be back by then and I'll talk to her on her way home from work. It is now 35.6 degrees outside and at this level it's 82.6 in here. I'll see you guys when I get back. I'm just going to leave the camera here. I seen one out there and I missed it. <laughs> and I shouldn't have missed it, believe me. I saw my dad out there too. He was out walking. Just checking things out. Talked to him for a little while. What a nice day. I mean, no wind. 34.9 now, just awesome out there. It's a bedtime snack. You like that cat food? Come on. What you guys are saying, but the food's right here. <laughs> Maybe that's not so bad. That lake is ice covered, but you're not going to walk on it yet. There's not even quite an inch. You can see that smoke from the tent stove just laying over the lake. Plenty toasty in here now. I turned off that diesel heater a few hours ago. I only let it run about maybe three hours and heated it up really nice back there.
Yeah. It really smells good in here. <laughs> it really does. Don't do a whole lot of cooking inside the tent. Usually it's outside and when we do it in here it's uh, it smells good. more browning needed and then they will be perfect and I can add the rest back to it. Just seasoning this pan. I think I'll do uh, at least one more of the other ones too. You know, they sit there and they don't get used. This Griswold I use quite a bit, but not like we use them at home.
getting a little smoky in here. <laughs> so. Have to air it out. Well, it's 10 minutes to 11. It's time for bed. Good morning, everybody. A couple minutes after 5 o'clock, 25.6 degrees. Nothing to do this early in the morning, so I'm just going to lay here and scroll my phone. Looking at the weather here today, 34 degrees for the high, a low of 14 tonight. That's going to be chilly in the morning. 35 tomorrow, low of 26. 35 on Sunday with a low of 34, with an 80% chance of, it looks like over a half inch of rain on Sunday. Monday, a 70% chance of 0 0.3 inches of snow. Tuesday, one inch of snow, and that looks, well, I think that's going to come like overnight. I'll be leaving Tuesday. And Wednesday, two inches of snow. And then, oh yeah, temperatures 37, 26, 32, 28, 33, 27. And then next weekend, it looks like 34, 25, 36, 29. That's not bad. Sunrise today is at 7.53, so that means at 6.23 you could shoot this morning. So tomorrow we'll be able to, shall be able to shoot at like 6.25, 7.19 right now, so I will have been out in the stand for a while. And then the, tomorrow night we have daylight saving switch. I, I wish they would get rid of that and just leave it on daylight savings time, but they haven't done that yet. I have another red squirrel that keeps running across the tent and getting in the area above the bedroom. Just heard him run across, and it is squirrel season. Just don't tell Melissa. <laughs> Who else is willing to come inside? It's nice and warm in here. Once Melissa calls on her drive to work and I get that done with, then I think I'm going to get in my truck and drive and see if there's any deer tracks. I want to walk about halfway into my far stand because there's a spot where they, like I walk in this way, they cross left to right there or right to left. And you can't cover it from the stand, but 
a lot of times they'll run right there and you you know not out on the road so I want to see if there's any tracks there and see if there's any grouse but I'll wait till Melissa calls I was just sitting here listening to public radio I just shut it off when I'm doing the video and reading comments on the last video that I put up which went up yesterday Somebody said I had talked in that video about doing a hooking up an old cook stove, one of the wood burning cook stoves that we have at the farmhouse. And some people were commenting on it, talking about how that would be neat and how they have, you know, grandma did it or whatever. And somebody said about baking bread in it, and it was like, ah, oh, I forgot that I was, when I came up here, I know I have the bread maker and I wanted to see if I had all the ingredients for making bread and make a, a loaf today. I don't have my recipe here. I'll have to watch my video. <laughs> I have a video on my go-to recipe for making bread in a bread maker. I've got KFC biscuits, pancakes, bannock, Melissa's biscuits. Is that what it says? Yep trail mix, but I don't have my bread recipe up there. You are going to go buy one of these? It's okay, that's my oh. bread machine recipe. That's all I needed. This guy talks too much. One cup of water. I'll just take a picture of it. Step by step. Pound off, regular slice. When you look online at different recipes, they'll give you the recipes and then say add them into the machine. You can use all purpose flour on this recipe also. It tastes really good also. Uh, but, it's a little bit rancid, uh, but it's not bad. Gives you a tighter loaf. Two tablespoons of short We just threw one out at the house and it was so right strong flour. smelling. Uh, this one is not bad at all, probably because it's frozen half the year. You can also use butter if you don't have shortening, and there really is oh, a bunch of a difference. I can use butter instead of shortening. I'll do that. Two tablespoons of sugar. I like to make a little well in here. Just like that. And I kind of put the yeast there a little bit, and then I kind of sprinkle a little bit around. Well, if you guys don't watch this guy, you should. He's got good videos. <laughs> it says that I posted it in comments. How do I get to comments? There we go. There it is. Well, I have that sourdough bread one in this one too, and Melissa just started a new sourdough starter, and she's been feeding it for about a week, maybe a week and a half now, and it's really starting to bubble. And there was another recipe that she found, because you know you have to discard every day and get rid of some of the starter, and then you add more flour and water, and so it keeps going. But what um, this person does is takes that discard, puts it on like a cookie sheet, um, or a piece of foil on a cookie sheet with some... Uh, cooking spray on there, dumps it on there, put a little seasoning on it, and then shove it in the oven, and it makes sourdough crackers. And I thought that that was the neatest thing ever because for me, usually, you know, I don't, I never eat breakfast, and then I'll eat lunch, and then usually about three or four o'clock, I'm, you know, I've done enough stuff where I can tell I need a little bit of something, so I'll go in and maybe I'll eat an orange or. Uh, if we have some chips, I'll have some chips. Well, if we had those crackers, you know, that would be so cool to make if they were any good because now I haven't been buying as many chips because when you go to the store, like for a thing of Doritos, it's like $6.99. And if you're not watching yourself, you could eat that whole bag in one sitting or two sittings. And to me, it's just a total waste of money. So something like that where you could make it almost every single day because you're discarding every day I think would be a really great thing. So we're definitely going to try that. Let's see if I have everything to make bread. First thing I'm going to need is flour. Sugar, I need sugar. I'm trying to see if I, oh yeah, here's an open flour. All purpose, it's not bread flour, but that doesn't matter. I've got yeast. Wonder how that works since this has been.
frozen and thaw forever. I wonder if I have any packets. This is yeast also. Well, this has been open, so what the heck. This is so hard. I can't imagine how much yeast is in there once you get that opened up. One cup of warm water, two and a quarter teaspoons of yeast, two tablespoons of shortening, but I can use butter, so we'll use butter, one teaspoon of salt. Let's see, what do I have for salt? Salt. Two and a half cups of bread flour, all purpose will work, and it'll make a one and a half pound loaf on a regular cycle. That's the problem I have is like, I don't know what a regular cycle is. I mean, they have basic breads, light, medium, or dark, whole wheat, light, medium, or rapid, specialty, French, sweet, dough cake, quick bread, and jam. So basic breads, I suppose I'll just do a, like a number two, a medium. And just do that and see what happens. I know when you use warm water, you only want it warm. You don't want it hot or it'll kill the yeast. So that's what our loaf looks like before it's turned into a loaf. It just says 250, unless it's supposed to, oh, maybe it's, I don't see red very good. Two hours and 50 minutes. drive down and walk part way into my far stand down there. My dad, he went up and he's walking into his clearing stand just to see if there's any deer tracks. And right where he gets up where he's gonna park, he saw two big wolves. That's the problem. My dad messaged me this morning and my mom had messaged my dad and there was a thing on the news that my mom saw talking to the DNR and they were talking about how bad deer hunting was up here and that they even thought about closing the season up here this year, which uh, would, that would be stupid because first of all, there's nothing to shoot. Second of all, they won't close it because they would lose all that money from people buying license and and they wouldn't fix anything. It's the wolves are the problem. They need to kill the wolves. And I, I don't, you know, <laughs> strong views on that.
No tracks back here. I have a stand way back on this side, a little tiny one. Haven't been back there in quite a few years. Doubt there's anything back there either. It's such a hard walk because everything is so thick in the beginning here. It's so weird to just walk in the woods with snow like this and zero deer tracks, just squirrel tracks. There's my stand. I think I only sat out here one time. It's an uncomfortable stand. <laughs> but at that time there was a whole bunch of tracks, a heavy trail. See how that ravine drops down? There was a real heavy trail down there. Most of the straps for the stand itself have snapped or rotted away. Using the sound of my truck as a compass. My dad messaged me and he walked all the way out to his stand that's in the clearing, that one that's way up there. And uh, that one that's real high in the air. And did not see one track in that whole clearing going out. That's like unheard of. I'm gonna walk down this trail a ways. I don't know if you guys remember, it's probably been four years ago or whatever, I had a stand. I was gonna put up a portable stand way back there put a camera up, saw a deer on the camera, and then we had the big ice storm that came through and you couldn't even, I finally made it back there and got the camera, but some of it, the trees were down so bad over the trail that I would be on my hands and knees going underneath it. They've cleared part of it here because there's some people that had some stands if you go up part way and off to the left. In fact, there's somebody that watches the channel. I don't see that anybody's walked in here I'm gonna leave my camera back here because sometimes I see grouse, so I'm gonna bring my gun. I didn't bring it with me on those other, the walk we just did, but I'm gonna bring it back there now just to see. I just walked way back there, and I even went in to the left and walked down by that guy that had the stand in there, and the stand is still there. Nobody's been there, for sure not this year. The uh, the ladder on it is like separated, like the tree is blown so hard that it separated the bottom two parts of the ladder. And it looked like to me like I thought that the stand was facing the other direction. And maybe it was years ago, I don't know, but I walked past it because it's not like I'm contaminating anything. There wasn't, I didn't see one deer track. And what an awesome spot for a stand. You walk past it and you get past, I don't know how far it is, and it is like an 80 foot drop. Like you, to climb up that hill, if you were at the bottom, there's no way you could get up it without grabbing the trees and it's all solid little pine trees coming up it. So I mean, the deer would have to go right along that ridge and the perfect spot, but no tracks. And when I was walking out there, I shot two grouse and one I kind of come around this little slight bend and he was in the middle of the trail and he had his back black feathers on the back of his neck were all puffed up and his a tail was all fanned out and I thought oh am I close enough and I and I just then I just aimed for the head and shot and he was dead right away and then I walked a few more steps and I thought you know what there, he wasn't just being all strutty like that for me there's got to be another grouse there 
So then I just kind of looked, walked a couple steps and watched, and on the left side of the trail, sure enough, there was another grouse, and I'm, I'm imagining that was a she, and kind of going up because it was kind of a hill right there too, so I shot her. So yeah, I got two grouse out of the deal. And then after I came out from where I went to the left to go look at that stand, then I continued down this trail a long ways, never once saw a deer track. And then coming out, maybe 200 yards from the right here, I flushed another grouse off to the right here. Never saw it, but I flushed it. My dad messaged me and George was coming in or going out or something, and my dad talked to George for a while, so we'll get to hear if there's any tracks back by his stands. I'm gonna walk down this trail right here. Years ago, used to be such a great grouse trail, and I don't think I've seen a grouse on it for the last four years, but I remember Max and I going down here. I've talked about it before, and we come around the bend, and there was two grouse there, and I shot them both. They were so close that Max was off looking somewhere else for them and couldn't find them <laughs> until he finally walked right over them. I decided to take the camera with me. I'm only going to take this down as far as the Little River, but it's a pretty walk. No deer tracks. That bend right there to the right is where I got those two grouse, and I looked right here. Grouse tracks. I just shot one. And then when I shot, another one jumped over here. There was tracks all over the ground here. I was just taking like two steps and stopping. Two steps and stopping. Still could be more. There it is. I'm dedicating that one to Max. He loved walking this trail. It's amazing the devastation that pine beetle or whatever it is has done to the to all these trees, the balsam. This you used to walk in here and it was just like you're walking down a trail with pine trees on each side of you. So you're just like just kind of scooting through a, a little path. And now look how open it is. I see that birch tree right there. It has a piece of chaga on it. Uh, maybe about eight feet up. And I got some grouse tracks right there, but they're older. I'm not going to go much further. I just wanted to see if there was any deer tracks on this side of the little river. Nothing here. I think we'll head back to the tent. It'll be lunchtime by the time I get there. Well, it's a few minutes after 12, so I'll head back and have some lunch. Just was messaging with George, and he stopped over at the tent, but I wasn't there. And uh, then when he was driving back to his cabin, he saw my dad, who was out 
scouting by that's George right there. Uh, scouting by his stand and talked to him, but George said he's not going out to his stand to look at anything today because he doesn't want to be discouraged or anything until tomorrow. <laughs> I told him, well, I won't tell you anything about my scouting today except for that I've already shot three grouse. Smells like homemade bread in here. I'm not sure how long that has yet. To... It's down to 73 in here. I need to put a couple more sticks of wood on the fire. hot. Looks pretty good though. Haven't been doing much since lunch. Oh, it was a late lunch, but it's a few minutes after three o'clock right now. That lake out there yesterday, the dark was a lot darker. You can tell it's still making ice. 34.5 right now, so it's just above freezing. But most of the day has been below. I'm gonna go ahead and walk down the tent driveway again, see if I see any grouse, walk down and down the road a bit. Earlier today I only had six shells with me and I was starting to get worried. The thing was two of them were steel shot and I need to get rid of those because I kept grabbing them to put them in my gun and it's like I don't need to blow the bird apart. inch mag probably four shot two shot that would have really done a number on them I'll be back shortly I walked down the driveway and I went across the driveway all the way out to the swamp and then cut back over Kind of came out across from where Sarah goes to her stand. I didn't see anything but 35.8 it's too warm to be running around with a jacket on. <laughs> well for the last 45 minutes this is what I was doing putting this thing together because all the parts were packed in cardboard and stuff. I'm gonna cook up some pork steaks on this tonight.
these pork steaks, the potatoes are cooking up really nice on this stove. It's going to be a great supper. <laughs> That's a good looking dinner right there. I want to put more wood in the stove, but it's amazing how much BTU you get out of one 36-pack 30, beer cardboard container. I don't really know what kind of a mood for a movie. I mean, I, I keep putting stuff in and then not really watching it. It's just noise in the background. I watched Shooter yesterday. didn't really watch it. Clint Eastwood, Joe Kidd. It just played in the background. Usually I'm doing this with my kids, but they're not going to be up here for a while. So I got to get my stuff ready for in the morning. What I'm going to do is I'm going to run out tomorrow morning. Uh, not as early as I usually do, but like a half hour before light and go out to Sarah's stand and sit. And then after that, maybe sit there an hour. And then I want to walk back behind Sarah's stand and go back to her old stand. My dad is going to go out and sit in the newsstand for an hour or so and then he's going to walk around also if he doesn't see anything. I'm just putting this stuff in here so that I have it. The knife I got from George, awesome knife. If you guys want some really nice knives, message me. I'll give you his website. Okay, shells right here. My silver tip, 30 out of 6. I'm going to shoot my Mossberg Patriot tomorrow. Okay everyone, well it is 10.37 and I am going to bed. Tomorrow is the Minnesota 2023 deer hunting opener, and we will see what happens. Good morning everybody. I've just been sitting here. I was texting with Melissa and Zachary and my dad and my dad said that he said cold morning clear skies. He's going to go out about 8 o'clock so he can see if there's any tracks. I'm probably going to go out around 7. You can't shoot until almost 730. 
tomorrow, you know, daylight savings ends tonight, so tomorrow it would be an hour earlier. So today I would have had to wake Sarah up at 5.30, where tomorrow I would have had to wake her up at 4.30. But right now it's about 10 minutes to 6, 5.50. So another hour or so, and it'll be time to head out. I'm not in any hurry to get out there because we haven't seen any deer tracks. So I don't have that feeling like I need to get in my stand an hour before light so everything can calm down. I mainly want to go walking back behind her uh, Sarah's stand and everything, so uh, I, yeah, I, I'm, I'm not really in any big hurry. I just started my truck out there. Get some double gloves going here. 10.9 degrees. Wonder if tomorrow is going to be as cold as today. Tonight's low is 24. It's supposed to be a high of 34 today. 24 tonight, 35 tomorrow with a 91% chance now of almost a half inch of rain. And then overnight Sunday, uh, 64% chance of 0.4 inches of snow. Well, I've sat out here longer than I expected to. You just end up sitting and you're just used to <laughs> sitting for hours. I think pretty soon I'm gonna go and try to find Sarah's old stand. My dad messaged with George and George and his son Stephen both walked out to their stands this morning and they saw no tracks. Be a perfect morning otherwise, it's cold no wind, you'd be able to hear them. Snow so you could see them. Nice morning for deer hunting. Well, we go in right here. It's real easy to get turned around back here. I've had it happen more than once. <laughs> I mean, I know I have to go west to get to the road, but... This one tree right here, that big dead pine tree. I should be able to see that in there. I can see her old stand over there. We'll walk over there in a minute. Right here was the really heavy deer trail when we put that stand up. 
like a deer highway. <laughs> she got a deer here the first year that she sat there. No tracks in here now. Over there, see it kind of goes up. And then it's like a direct drop off on the other side. So this was like a perfect little draw for them to come through. There's her stand. With that ladder right there, it was the hardest stand to get into and so uncomfortable. And right there is Sarah's old stand. And we come over here in this part of a bucket. And then this tree has fallen down, but you can see that those were steps. My brother Chris's deer stand that he got his very first deer in was right here. It was a spike buck. And I don't know how it was hooked up to that tree. Usually back then we would build them in the trees. You see, you'd have three trees together. And yeah, he shot his first deer out here. That would have been, no, well, we're pushing 40 years ago. And we put Sarah's stand up. We didn't even know that this was here. We had didn't know where we were and then we came back here and I saw this and I don't know if I showed my dad or whatever and he's the one that said that Chris got his deer back here. So well, I think we'll start heading back. What a nice morning. I got turned around back here again. I ended up trying to go that direction. I don't know why I do that every time. I didn't follow my tracks in the snow. And then I knew I was going wrong, and then I saw the big dead pine tree back there. So, go every, I mean, it's, this is like the third time it's happened. I don't know what it is about this woods back here. I just jumped a grouse. Should be like grouse hunting instead of deer hunting. All right, back to where we started. You got grouse tracks. Right here, this is that tree. Every single year there was a scrape under it. And last year was the first year that there wasn't. The deer would come right through here between the two clearings. just jumped another grouse. Could have been the same one that I jumped back there, but <laughs> my truck is right there. I think next year when I come up here, I'm just going to do grouse camp 2024. Forget about the deer. <laughs> George's truck. I saw Tom's back where he usually parks. I'm pretty sure that's him. Has some pretty fresh wolf tracks there. just cross the road here. Oh, there's two of them. Let's see if we can get this one. There it is. I won't focus on it, but...
Yeah, I think next year we're just going to do grouse camp. A lot of grouse this year. transferring the files because when I was in the deer stand I brought a different camera and if I don't keep these in their um, subsequent folders you have no idea what a mess it is trying to edit a video like this one. mostly ice so put that by the fire my dad uh, a loaf of bread. I bet you he'll like that. George texted me because they were getting off their stand. He said, no tracks anywhere and no pictures on three cameras. Tom walked around in the woods and didn't see anything. He said I should go down where I hunted. Remember before I would drive down a ways and I would walk in. And then they cleared that part in front of it now. Maybe I'll do that. Maybe I'll run down and see if there's any tracks down there before I head into my clearing stand this afternoon. I just wanted to... There was a little bit of sleet that fell just a little bit ago and now the whole lake looks pretty white. It's, it's Makes it look completely like safe to walk on, even though it's not.
A little bit of light snow falling. Just texting with my brother Chris. He shot an eight pointer this morning. So they put that on my sister-in-law's tag and he's back out in his stand. I walked through that whole swampy area where before there you could easily see tracks because it was so wet. I'm seeing nothing. I brought my cushion and my chair here. I mean, there's just no tracks. I've walked, continually walked down there, probably another mile, and I would see a couple deer tracks, but no more than I saw up here. So I don't see any reason to go way the heck back there dressed in all these heavy clothes. And I don't know if I should just sit right here. <laughs> There's just as much sign here as there is anywhere else. How I moved to a different spot. I sat at the other one for about an hour, but it didn't have hardly zero cell service. And it's like, if I'm gonna sit where there's no deer tracks, there better be cell service. <laughs> so I just went to this side of the swampy area. And then there's this cleared area. I'm just gonna sit here and watch the edge of it. Well, it's starting to get dark. I think it's time to head back to the tent. I've been out here about uh, three and a half hours. My dad, he went back about an hour and a half ago. He was going to stay up at least through Wednesday of next week, but now he's going to go home Monday. <laughs> yeah, he said it's too hard to sit in the stand when there's just no deer around. It's a nice night though. I just can't scroll another TikTok in my have my one earpiece in, don't even need gloves on. It's really nice. Well, I had it going before I left. I was making a loaf of bread in my bread maker. Can I run it over there? It's just a little loaf, but I made it for you. I made one for me yesterday. Do you have butter over there? Otherwise, I have butter. Okay. I'll, I'll run it over before I get my heavy clothes off here. Okay, bye. I don't really have a whole lot planned tonight. I, I mean, I have pork steak and a baked potato and half a can of veggies from lunch for dinner. Uh, I'll have to cook tomorrow. Talking to my dad when I was over there, uh, it, saw, I, I, it wouldn't surprise me if he's gone for home by noon tomorrow. He's frustrated that there's no deer tracks and then we have rain coming in so far it looks like about one o'clock in the afternoon tomorrow so then he worries about the roads being slippery or turning to ice and he wants to get a bunch more screws and screw his um porch uh, roof into the building better so he wants to go get some screws and he'll come back up probably for next weekend or end of this week i think he said he had a meeting on thursday and then he was going to come back up but yeah, he was going to stay all the way through Wednesday, and I was going to go home Tuesday morning. 
and then it was going to be maybe go home Monday, and now today when I was over there, he's just kind of hinting that he might be, if I'm gone tomorrow, it's just because of the roads, you know, and stuff. So I, I, I'm not sure, but we'll see. It, it is frustrating to go out there and sit, and there's no, nobody has seen a deer track, you know. And how many miles was I away today? Still no deer tracks. But I'm going to go out to Sarah's stand in the morning and sit, do it like I did today. I won't go out, you know, like I usually do an hour before light or anything, but... Go out there, sit for a while, maybe walk a little bit in there, see if there's anything. The thing is up here, and maybe I've already said that in this video, up here this ends up being kind of like a wintering area for deer. So there have been a lot of times when there hasn't been much sign on the opening weekend, but there was some sign. But then by, I've shot most of my deer up here uh, the last weekend. So, and that's when, I always would say, that's when the big boys come out to play. Well, I don't see anybody around to play or to play with, but at the same time, they tend to come into the area. The, the tricky part is, if we get a foot of snow, which can easily happen by two weeks from now, that changes everything. And then the deer are completely shut off for like a week before they really move, start moving around. So... But we'll see what happens. I mean, myself, Sarah, and Zachary are still planning on being here third weekend. And like Sarah said, I mean, if, if you can get up here with the roads and stuff, like we were talking, even if there isn't much for deer hunting, at least it's at some time at the tent, you know. And, and I haven't seen Sarah since duck hunting. So, yeah. But it, it wouldn't surprise me if my dad leaves tomorrow. Here's a picture of my brother Chris that my sister-in-law posted online. A little eight pointer. <laughs> she always got pictures of the dogs. Pretty nice. probably should have put that video in. <laughs> I ended up, uh, what did I, I'm, I'm just transferring files now like I did last night, but I, let's see. Um, I've edited one video clip, that's it. Otherwise I sat and watched the whole entire movie. <laughs> not going to get anything done, I need to put something in that I don't like. Melissa just went out to do the boiler and she posted these pictures on her Facebook page. It's snowing there. Okay everyone, well it's 10.35 right now, but tonight we lose daylight savings, so it's actually 11.35 as far as waking up tomorrow morning, so I am going to bed. Good morning everybody. That clock on the weather station is wrong. It's because we had daylight savings end last night. So right now it's 4.30. Just put a couple more sticks of wood in the fire. I don't have to head out to the stand until, I don't know, right around 6 o'clock. I was just messaging with George and they're going out this morning. Him and Steven and Tom, they're going to sit only until 11 o'clock today because, because of the rain that's coming. 
I'm not going to make it out there that long if I don't see. I mean, I never do. I do morning, and they don't do an evening hunt. They just do morning up until usually like on 1 or 2 o'clock or something like that. But My brother Chris, he'll sit in his deer stand all day long. He's always been that way. Even when we hunted together, he would go in his stand and sit there all day long. And I tell you, I don't know how... A lot of people do it, but I just go crazy. Well, I'm not going to sit too much longer. George and Steven and Tom are out and Tom saw fresh wolf tracks. That was it. No deer tracks. I don't know if my dad went out this morning or not. He asked me if I saw any fresh tracks and I didn't. That wind is chilly. It's not as cold as it was yesterday temperature wise, but I talked to or messaged with Carrie Rod and their group one guy shot a deer, he uh, was in his stand and two bucks were fighting. He shot one of them and last I heard they were tracking it. I talked to Jeff and he said last year on opener they saw like 20 deer and this year they have only seen three and nobody has shot anything yet. My brother Chris, he's back in his stand again but he didn't say that he saw anything. We just messaged for a while. And then I've been messaging with Melissa. I just looked at the radar and according to the radar it's snowing here right now. But it's not. Just my luck. Just turning into the tent driveway and there's a grouse. <laughs> uh, I don't, oh, I, oh there it goes. <laughs>
Well, that shower felt good. I wanted one today. I think I'm going to start up the gas grill, make a few burgers up for lunch. Tonight we'll have to... I've got two pork steaks in here. I've got this chuck roast also. I guess we'll see what I feel like doing. My dad, he, he left for home, so... It's just me up here, well, George and Stephen and Tom are up here, so that's good. I guess I'll wait to start the grill for a little bit. I was looking at this clock and I haven't set it yet. Uh, <laughs> that one automatically sets. It's only a little bit after 11. I thought it was 12 o'clock. That wind is really starting to blow out there. My phone had said only 10 to 15 miles an hour, but there was just a gust that came through that I could hear the trees in here. I'm not actually going to go sit in a stand tonight. It's a little bit after 3 o'clock and it's real windy out there now and then it'll like rain a little bit and stop. There's more rain coming. Like if you look at the radar, it's supposed to be kind of raining right now and there's a darker bunch coming. I think it said, I just looked on here, I wonder if it's still on, 34 degrees. 100% chance of 0.59 inches, so over a half inch tonight. So I'm not going to sit, I mean like I said when I look at the radar, it's uh, it, it's coming, but I mean you guys have seen me uh, hunt in some super harsh conditions, I mean really bad. <laughs> that one time I wasn't going to go out in the morning, it was so bad. And then I decided to go out anyway, and it kind of let up a little bit, and that's the, I think that was the last buck that I shot. That was a bad, crappy day. My hands were so cold. I think that was in 2019. And, uh, but I'm going to go out, I'll have my deer rifle in the truck, and I'm going to have my shotgun in the truck. We'll see if we see any grouse, just see if we see anything. Run the loop. Every time I drive around, I don't see any other hunters out there hunting, so... Usually there would be some tucked away in different spots, and this year, there's even a place up the tar 
And these people always, this road kind of goes up. A road, you know, like a trail that goes off, and they would always be hunting in there for years. And yesterday when I was driving to go sit in that spot, it was the first time I have not seen them there. I remember the one year when I heard about it that they had shot a really nice 10-point buck up there. And I'm sure that's why they kept going back. But let's get out of the cabin for a while. Let's see, I got shells for my shotgun. I've got my shells for my rifle. We're good. I'm going to walk down this trail, but I'm going to leave my camera here. This is the one I, we walked down. I shot that one grouse. This is where I talked about Max. I've got my double barrel, so in the first barrel I have, I'll put birdshot, and in the second barrel I will put a slug, just in case I would see a deer. Well, there was nothing down that trail. No new deer tracks or anything either. Well, I think I'll walk back down this one too. Not as far as I went last time, but there's only about half hour left of shooting time, so I'm not going to go too far, but I had shot those two grouse, and on my way out when I was pretty close to the trail here, or the road, um, I did jump a grouse, so we'll see if there's anything there. Thought I would take my phone, give you a little video, because I never took a camera down this trail before. This is right where I shot the other two grouse. See those lines on the ground? That's where the BBs went. Well, that's far enough. I think we'll head back to the tent. This time of the evening, you got to keep looking up in the trees because the grouse will roost up there. I've been a lot of grouse I've shot like that in the afternoons. That wind is really getting nasty out there. Wanted to see what they say it's gusting to now. Gusting to 21 it says. And we, now we have a 100% chance of 0.55 inches. But I keep looking at the radar and it just keeps going around us. I was going to either cook on the open fire tonight, which there's no way now, the bond stove or the grill for that chuck roast, but I think I was just going to cut it into strips. That's probably the best way to cook those things up. Cut them into half inch strips, throw them on the grill, it cooks fast, it's really good. But as windy and crappy as it is out there, I think what I'm going to do is just, I already have a dirty fry pan, might as well just use the same one, wipe her out. And just cut up some of the chuck roast into chunks and maybe maybe one of the pork steaks too and just throw it in and fry it up. I have those fried potatoes and we'll get a veggie and I think that'll be good for dinner. Okay, let's see if I can get some work done. Oh, 
Well, I made it up to the tent, brought the diesel heater up here with me. 28 degrees outside, 23 degrees inside. Just, just talking with Zachary here, he's not going to come up tomorrow. I mean, there's no need. My thing says over a half inch of rain, his says an inch of rain tomorrow. Who, who wants to be up here in that when there's no deer around anyway? And um, it has been really windy, like right now it's not too bad. You can't really hear it. And all of a sudden it'll blow really hard and you'll hear the tent creak and then it'll calm back down. So yeah, I doubt it's gonna be a very nice morning. One 25-minute video complete. Before I was going to cut this up, it's just like when I catch fish. I've got the a knife that George sells the knives and this one, Mark, when he was still alive, he bought it for me and George brought it over here and that is this fillet knife right here and it's super nice and it works really good but I, every time I take it out, I just took it out right now, I was going to cut this up and I look at it and think it's too nice to use so I put it back. I think I cleaned just one or two fish with it, otherwise it's like, it looks good, too good hanging up to use. And now, of course, since Mark passed away, I didn't even think about that until right now. It's another reason not to use it and save it for good. But it's a really good knife. I was going to cook up some pork with this, but you got to cook pork longer, so I'll just wait. And then if we have to, I think it's going to be so crappy tomorrow, we'll end up being in the tent. I can always cook up something, some more pork, or one of the pork steaks, or this here, whatever. I'll just do the beef tonight and have that with the potatoes. And I'll have to find a veggie. I don't have a can that's open right now. Melissa made pork chops and onion gravy at home today, and that is so good. It takes her all day, I mean, like six, seven hours to cook that, but it's so good, and she just got it finished not too long ago. I wish I had some of that up here. That's some good stuff there. Not quite as windy out here, but it's been raining. Wish you guys could smell this. <laughs> Uploading that video now with my Verizon internet. It says 46 minutes. Probably end up being about a half hour. It would have taken about five minutes at the house. <laughs> but with the old internet we had at the house, it would have taken uh, two, three, uh, three hours, four hours maybe. So. This still isn't bad. So first I had 10,000 BC, but and I wasn't watching it, but the it started skipping. That's an old disc. So then I took it out and I had GI Joe Retaliation. Didn't even have the plastic off from it, so I put it in. Didn't watch any of it. <laughs> That's the kind of movie I need to 
be able to edit videos, I knew I didn't want to put in Broken Trail or anything that I wanted, would just like really watch. I think I'll put in Twister. I've watched that enough times, it shouldn't occupy me too bad if I can figure out how to open up this child-proof thingy. There we go. Another beautiful tent dinner. It's 10.30, it's time for bed. Good morning everybody. It's still raining so I'm not going out to a stand this morning. We'll see what it's like later on today. I decided I'm going to drive the loop. I just heard somebody shoot. George is not out today. I think it was just a grouse hunter. Usually when that deer rifle goes off, you about jump out of your seat. So it was probably a grouse hunter, but I just thought, oh, I'm going to see if I see anything. What a crappy day. I can see that one car drove through, so it must have just been a grouse hunter. doing since I got back is editing on this warm bond bond stove uh, video that I made for Northern Seclusion Channel. It's 10 minutes after 11 now so I kind of thought I'd get this done or get going so I get it done today. And then because and I, I'm I know this video is getting super long so I'm trying to kind of shorten it up because tomorrow morning I'll go home in the morning, yeah, and then I think I might be back up here for the weekend and then go back home and then we'll be up here with Zachary and Sarah for that third and final weekend. So it's gonna be a lot of a lot of video. And it is still this heavy, misty rain. You can see it on the water. I walk down there and that water is like on top of the ice. And it's still crappy, but the temperature now started dropping. It was 40, now it's in the 39s. So, and it looked like by one or two o'clock there might be some snow flurries or something, but it should kind of clear up. So hopefully it'll be nice enough to get on the stand this afternoon. It's raining even harder out there now. According to my phone, it was supposed to be done by 1 o'clock, and right now it's a quarter to 12. I have this box sitting outside on the porch and I'm trying to get it dried out so that if the rain stops, I can burn it. Compared to some years, I really have burned very little wood this... I mean, I've been up here for five days.
nice little meal of leftovers right there. I'll have to cook, we'll probably just cook some more of that chuck roast up tonight for dinner. It is officially switched over to snow. Everything is just so wet. That snow today was just a wet snow. 32 degrees. Well, tonight I'm just gonna clean things up so I can get out of here in the morning. I had those three grouse and I'd cleaned them before, but I didn't cut the meat off of them and get them put into a bag so I can toss them in the freezer. So I'm doing that right now, and then we'll start picking things up. take all of the canned stuff out because although this week doesn't sound like it's going to be nearly as cold as last week was and I'm planning on hopefully making it up next weekend but for sure the following this time of year though you never know if we get could get a 12 inch snowfall two foot snowfall you just never know and then I wouldn't be able to get in here in St. Louis Back in 91, the holiday, or the Halloween blizzard, uh, that year, I didn't, we hunted up in this area, but my brother and I set up a tent similar to this, but we would set it up, and, you know, no floor, it was not like this. But, 
We could only make it in a part way, and I know I've talked about this before, but for my dad, him and Ernie were up here for deer hunting, and they had to go from the road all the way to the cabin, his old cabin, on horse, uh, on snowshoes. So anyway, if something like that happened, I of course wouldn't come up here, and then all of these cans would explode over the wintertime. I'll bring you a present, you like that? I wouldn't be able to get in here to get them until, well, unless I were to snowshoe all the way in. Anyway, I don't I'd like to just avoid any of that. So I'll put these in here. Then when I come up next time, or I'll probably just leave them right in my truck. And then when I come up next time, they'll be in there. And then by the time I'm done with the next two weekends of hunting, all this can go home and go on the shelf to be used. And next spring I'll bring new stuff up. I always get this question with all the stuff in jars. That's all dehydrated stuff, so there's no liquid in any of that, right. so that can stay. My homemade wine that's up there, that always stays. This one bottle right here that has the cork in it. Every winter I come up here for the winter trip and the cork is popped. I pick it up and I put it back on. <laughs> the stuff smells so strong. It was strong when, I mean, I made it in March of 2012. It smells, it smells like wine, but I, I drank it back then and it's super strong. And this stuff here is cherry wine that my brother made me years ago. I wish the year was on that. And I've tasted it, but since he made it, I just keep it. Not much of a dinner, but it's enough to get me through till I have lunch with Melissa tomorrow. I'm sure we'll go out somewhere. It's truly remarkable, Spock, that you have achieved so much, despite your disadvantage. Okay, everyone, well, it's time for bed. It's almost 10 to 11. I'm just messaging with Melissa. Tomorrow we'll get the last few things put in the truck and uh, head out. But I'll be back up here in just a few more days.
Good morning, everybody. 5.33 in the morning. I'm not leaving till it's light, so at least two hours. I wanted to see what the weather is showing. It's getting light out there, but I don't. From here, I'm going to Melissa's work, so I don't want to get there too early. Today, 97% chance of four inches of snow. I guess I'm getting out just in time. Half inch tomorrow, one inch the next day, and then pretty clear. Temperatures aren't going to be too bad at the end of the next week even, so four inches of snow today. I guess I will start getting things shut down here and get it in my truck. Yeah, I can't really leave yet for another 45 minutes at least. But I think the roads are going to be icy this morning. Because you got to figure it rained all day and we had this snow and it was like 40 in the morning. Right now it's 25, so there's going to be some icy spots. Okay, everyone. Well, thanks a lot for watching. I know people are going to complain that there's no deer around, which I already know, but I had a great time, and I'll be back up here again in a few days. road does not look good. It's going to be a slow ride. All ice. I have to drive really easy. There's this light misting that's hitting my windshield. You don't need a, your windshield wipers for it, but it's just misting against it, and that is freezing on the road. So yeah, it can be really slippery. I will see you guys on the next video.